Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In this video we're going to be taking a look at another very interesting educational video game, but this time it's actually a very unusual video game and this one is called Hacknat. This is essentially a kind of a hacking simulator, but it is a video game so it's really uh, quite innocent and actually super super fun now. But the reason I like this, um, except for the fact that it's actually about hacking, it is also a very awesome way for, for you to kind of engage your students or possibly become really interested in things like programming, networking, and learn a lot about um, things like command, command line and servers and even things like digital citizenship because there's a, in, in, the, in the game as you play it, you're going to learn some really interesting things about you know being a responsible uh, user of internet and responsible user of uh, everything digital and so on and so forth. There's quite a lot of really cool things here But let me just show you how this game works and what it's all about So basically this is your interface sort of like your operating system and you're this unknown hacker that's about to change the world um, You basically have these various servers that you can connect to just like in real life um, They all have IP addresses. They all have names. They have file systems and so on uh, There's logs as well that you have to be aware of and uh, right now my mission I believe is to possibly connect to oh yeah and you also have a mail service that usually gives you various missions and various uh, assignments and this game is a it's it's sort of like a sandbox game in a sense that it doesn't really have um, uh, a sort of a linear progress there's all these things you can do just by yourself without really uh, following the storyline and, and in, that, in that sense it's actually quite realistic so anyway so I have to connect to this server right here called bitwise test PC and it also gives me a, a guide because this is just early game I'm gonna show you what the game looks like later on uh, because I do have a save game from further down the line but this is just in the beginning where it sort of shows you how to basically hack computers so essentially what you do is you can try to log in, but if you don't have a username or password, it's not going to help you. You can try guessing them, I guess, but the easiest way to hack is to actually first to probe the system. And um, on the right here, it actually shows you a very realistic sort of command line that you would see in real life as well. And this particular server has four um, sub-servers, or there's four ports in a sense, and you only need to crack one of these ports to access the system. Now, this is actually kind of realistic as well because if you ever uh, did any kind of networking you would know that you know certain ports are open certain ports are closed and access to one port can essentially give a hacker access to your entire system now from a teacher's perspective this is kind of cool because you can basically teach your students the basics of command line which is essentially uh, how a lot of computers modern computers work so here if you if i actually type help it gives me a variety of commands right here and with with a very kind of a brief explanations on what they do and there's only uh, three pages of um, commands so this is not the entire list that you would have in real life but these are the sort of the important ones that you need for this game and so right now I, I'm actually supposed to type um, SSH crack which is basically a sort of a tool that you have in this game and there's actually these cracking tools that you'll get to acquire as you play through it and this one will crack port 22 so I have to type 22 and this will okay so I don't have if I don't have enough memory so there's also RAM in this game that you have to be aware of which means that I have to close all these help boxes and try again so here we go so this is the cracking operation uh, it's all kind of automatic you don't really have to do anything you just have to watch this until it turns green and this means this port has been cracked now we have to actually get access to the password or to the administration password and we do this with a command called port hack so you basically type port hack and it will sort of brute force its way through various passwords and login names until you get a, a password match now this is uh, sort of like it works in real life except it's very very simplified it usually takes a lot longer than that and but now you have access you have access to a network that you can scan and possibly find other computers we found nothing uh, or you can go into this file system and explore various files so there's uh, reports that you can read and there's actually various conversations you can basically uh, read or possibly even get some secrets by exploring these um, and a lot of this can actually uh, be a really good conversation tool for you know things like digital citizenship and being responsible when it comes to logs and when it comes to chats and you'll, you'll actually read some really uh, 
really, really embarrassing conversations and so on and so forth. Uh, important thing in here is actually log. So everything you did or everything I did on the server is logged on the server. And this can lead me to trouble. So I can actually get traced and caught and essentially it will be game over if someone ends up uh, catching me. So I have to actually use a command called remove or RM. And I have to put a little star here to remove all of these logs at the same time. As you can see, they're being erased right now. And this is essentially another uh, hacking 101 thing that you want to be aware of. So yes, this game does kind of teach you how to hack responsibly, but at the same time, it also teaches you how to use computers like a professional. Uh, so, but don't forget, this is still just a game and everything here is imaginary and not real. Anyway, so we've done this. So I think I actually have, I can return my quest uh, by sending an email. There we go. So this person gives me a new quest and an access to a new computer. Now, a lot of these IP addresses are randomly generated and you can actually try to discover some uh, by reading logs or by essentially just typing in different IP addresses. Um, I believe there's actually a collection of some secret IP addresses that people have found that will give you some crazy, crazy tools to use. Um, okay, I don't really need this, but I do need to try to hack this computer. So this is P. Anderson's bedroom PC. So this is essentially someone's home computer that you're going to be breaking into. And we're going to be using the same thing we did before. I'm going to use SSH crack and port hack. As you play the game, you'll actually acquire tools to crack all of these. So FTP server, SMTP mail server, HTTP web server. And all of these can be actually a really good opportunity to discuss what these do in class. So, you know, talk about what, if, what, what is an FTP server? Not many people remember a file transfer protocol and what it's for, but it's actually still around, it's still being used. Uh, so, you know, this is a perfect tool for um, any kind of a computer science class, computer class, or uh, introduction to networking. All right, so let's go into file system. Let's see what's going on here. Some documents here, laptop police report. Um, and I believe this is actually a part of the story where this person had his laptop stolen and we can, or we can actually, I believe even help him at some point, but I don't remember how, uh, but anyway, so, uh, oh yeah, and, and this, this folder here, system, this is essentially the operating system. And at some point in the game, you'll have to be actually You'll be able to change your operating system to a different look and I'll show you how it looks in, in the future game. And you can also, um, you know, if, if there's another hacker that's trying to attack you, you can go into his computer and erase his files and he won't be able to use his computer. So it's actually pretty, pretty cool that you're able to do this in this game. So I'm going to erase all of this and I forgot why I'm here. I think I, I may have to actually scan this computer to see if there's any other Nope, there's nothing else here. Okay, so why am I here? Uh, do I need some sort of a password maybe? Personal information, letter draft. So there's some personal letters here and I am not sure what I need to do. I need to... Um. Okay, is that it? Yes, that's it. Okay, so th this here can actually now become one of my sort of like zombie computers. So this is another topic to discuss. And you do this by typing shell. If you type shell, this computer appears here. You can now use this to do two things. One is that you can actually overload, um, overload proxies with it. I'll show you how it's done. It's basically you go to, you go to a server here and you essentially just press. So the proxies right here, type overload. And as you can see, for some servers, they'll actually start tracing me. When this reaches zero, you're in trouble because you are uh, going to have to fight your internet service provider and basically hack into the internet service provider and try to uh, change your IP address. So it's actually a very complex sort of simulation. Or you can also uh, use the trap uh, function right here to try to trap the trace, but it's, you know, it's kind of tricky. Anyway, so I'm going to, need to disconnect from here before I get caught and go into my other game where I've actually advanced quite a lot just to show you what it looks like. And this is what the game looks like in further stages. So basically what you will have here is a lot of different servers 
a lot of different requests and missions and all of them will have different sort of storylines some of them like this guy right here he's a notorious hacker that just wants to destroy everything and so you can follow his storyline and help him with havoc and destruction or this group right here is actually uh tries to show the world that hacking can be helpful and they're trying to you know protect people they're trying to do good things like for example there's a death row records database right here where you can either save people from being killed or vice versa kill them and i think actually some of them have already been executed so you may have to, yeah some of the family members may even ask you for um you know uh, some of the information from this particular server now what i really like about this is that it gets really complex it actually gets <laughs> colonel's food corner this is a kfc uh sort of a website um and it does get really complex and he, some of the missions here will require you to hack into like for example here this is a security company called nortron which is kind of based on norton which is an actual security company um and here the mission is actually to show that they're absolutely useless they sell products that nobody uses and or no that people do use but that actually doesn't protect you from anything and that's your mission in, in this particular uh storyline and this is actually one of the more difficult computers to hack so i'm going to show you what how the advanced hacking here works so you have proxy you have firewall you have four different ports you have to crack and so before you can even start doing this you have to collect um these kind of zombie machines you have to basically create yourself an army of different computers and uh these are called shells in the game or oh, they're actually called shells in real life as well and so what you do is you uh you connect them to your computer right here they'll become your kind of an army that you'll be using for uh for your evil or possibly good purposes at the same time you'll actually be more secure and be protected by their different IP addresses so that you don't get traced as easily. So essentially this is what you're doing. You're collecting these shells so that you can actually use them for your personal protection. Uh, you can also use them to trap different uh, traces, although I haven't really figured out how this works. But what I'm going to be using them for is for overloading the proxy server on this machine right here. So while I'm doing that, I'm also going to be analyzing their firewall in order for me to to find their password that they use to uh, overcome the firewall and to essentially start uh, cracking their password so it's a kind of a complex idea but here you go so overload first and they'll start tracing me right away i'm overloading their proxy i'm also going to analyze their firewall by typing analyze uh, and this will actually ha this will have to be done several times and this will allow me to find the password for their computer or for their firewall specifically. At the same time, I'm going to start cracking their uh, their ports by using my tools. I'm going to use these two tools first. And you can see them on the left side. They're actually uh, currently trying to crack the ports. And as soon as they turn green, that means they're cracked. Let's do two more. Let's do SMTP server, which if you are using this in class, you may want to teach your students what these do and what these are for. And we're almost done with the firewall. We only have 30 seconds left. I may have to disconnect so that they don't detect me. And if they do detect me, it's actually, it can lead to a game over, to basically losing the game entirely, uh, which is pretty cool. So you do ha only have one life in this game. Uh-oh. And I'm actually, just for fun, I'm going to show, because I'm about to crack the password, and it's actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it says right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C. All right, so I was traced. That's basically almost game over. It says you only have one chance left to, to save yourself. And the way you save yourself is uh, just like in real life. If, if a hacker is traced by an internet service provider, you basically have to hack your internet service provider and remove all of the logs from their server and essentially uh, try to change your IP address as well. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be connecting to their IP address, which is right here, 68144-9318. Uh, we're now going to hack their server. And to do that, we need to disable some of their security doing, using our tools. And I also have to disable their web server. Here we go. 
and now we're going to get their password and login name for their administrator. All right, so here we go. This is the last step. We just have to type our IP address and hopefully this works. I'm going to scan this. It should show me. That's us. All right. Assign new IP. There we go. Disconnected. This means we're saved. So IP address has been reset and trace averted, preparing for system reboot and we get rebooted and ta-da, there you go. So, and as you can see, even the reboot is kind of realistic. This is what it would look like on a, a Linux server. Um, and so here we go. So we start the new server, or I guess we start a new connection with a new IP address and we can start over from scratch. But essentially, this is what the game is like. And I, I honestly think this is a great tool for teaching all of these really cool ideas and really cool messages just to, you know, pique someone's interest in, uh, in networking and things like command line, which is usually really boring. And this does teach you the command line really well. And most importantly, that, uh, there's all these side stories in there that can lead to a dialogue about uh, cybersecurity, about digital citizenship, and of course about you know, being hacked or being a hacker, you know, there's a lot of different dialogues you can have with your students about this. Um, so this is it. This is the game in a nutshell. It's super fun. It's only $10 and it's, it was actually on sale when I bought it. So I got it for like five bucks and I definitely recommend that you give this a try. It, uh, this came out in August, 2015. It's super, super fun. And this is called Hacknet. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and check out some of the other videos on various games in education and also the other games that I've used to teach my students all sorts of lessons. Thank you guys and game you later. Bye bye.